AKA Angetown, creator of Team Renegade Fan Forum. Angetown, what's up? What's up? Dan and Memphis, what has been the most overwhelming thing since leaving the house? Having great fans like Angetown, you know, <laughs> is there, I didn't even, I was very vaguely familiar with the fan forum, but uh, now we'll definitely have to check it out. No, you know, the, the overwhelming support from fans, I used to joke with Memphis saying that I used to have three fans, and uh, it was my mom's sister <laughs> and girlfriend, you know, and, uh, but, you know, the overwhelming support from fans has been, uh, you know, it's been awesome at the same time. It's been um, interesting to deal with, but it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very overwhelming because the thing with fans is you want to be able to talk to everybody. You want to be able to type everybody back and write people letters and thank thank everybody for the support and it's almost impossible I mean we both do a lot you know I have two companies that I run I work for a huge entertainment company in LA and to be honest with you I work all the time um, you know and we're working on renegade gear constantly and there's a lot of things that we're doing but you know we do love all our fans I love all my fans I you know I, I thank everybody for watching it's amazing so um, I think that's the overwhelming thing but no we appreciate you know all the work especially some of those montages you know whoever yeah. made the Weezer <laughs> montage that's awesome you know but uh, no with fans like Anstown you know we, we really appreciate you know all all their support and you know it's great anything we can do for them you know you'll see the renegades bend over backwards to try to help them out or make them smile or make him laugh, do whatever we can. So. Um, from Gook asked, did you both go see The Dark Knight? Yes, <laughs> yes we did. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't see it together. We saw yeah. the Robert De Niro movie, which was not bad. Anytime you get Al Pacino and De Niro on the same screen. But, okay, Memphis, Dark Knight. Let me get your thoughts on The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, um, good. Great movie. Um, I good think or it, great? Because you just said good. Because uh, we talked about it, okay, about it every a, day in the house. It was a great. <laughs> it was a great movie. It should have been called The Joker instead of The Batman. Okay. It, you know, it focused on a lot of uh, Heath Ledger, which was amazing in that role. I thought it was a little bit long, to be honest with you. Okay. I thought it was a little long, but. It was a great movie, and I will say great. And what did it do? It, I mean, it broke yeah, huge everything. records. It was crazy. Um, I thought it was awesome. You know, I was very enamored with Heath Ledger's performance. However, you saw him, like, the whole time. He was the same character. You never saw him fluctuate. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still the best Joker, hands down. And it was yeah. well worth the, uh, what, three-month wait? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, from Heck Yeah Fool again. Dan, what are some of the things you did in the house to imitate Dr. Will? Some of the things I did. Well, you know they say uh, imitation is the uh, highest form of flattery. Um, but you know what? I, Real Player does uh, refeed the the live show. The what is it? The yeah, we do the replay for the live. Feeds. Replay the live feeds. I guess heck yeah, fool! You're gonna have to stay tuned, watch the feeds again, <laughs> and and you know what? Send me a message. Every and see detail. If you can pick them up. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah. Watch every detail. See, Give Dan them did a link. Dan did a lot of shady stuff in the house that nobody really caught what the first time. What are you talking time. about? So look, I'm telling you, watch it the second time. Watch it all over. Check all the shady stuff out because I promise you, he did some weird things. He used to creep around walls. <laughs> I'm telling you, the first couple of weeks were very interesting with Dan. You can, uh, you know, once you watch the feeds again front to back you can get in touch with me at my myspace which is myspace.com slash geese g-h-e-e-s or check out uh let's do this like judas.com yeah you can what's get your it, you what's can, your myspace uh memphis i don't search memphis garrett you'll find it you know it's right there but uh yeah you can get in, in contact with us through the website let's do this like judas.com yep so, so um Question from Dirk Diggler, from Memphis. <laughs> this is it the real Dirk, Dirk Diggler? <laughs> what is up, man? Only. We've heard uh, a lot about you. I thought buddy. you were just a movie character. I didn't yeah. know you were actually real. If Jerry had called you a womanizer <laughs> that one more time, would you have physically harmed him, or would you have just allowed people to restrain you? Ooh. I'll answer that question. Every, anyone who knows Memphis is, you can cross him once and he'll forgive you, but not forget. If you cross him twice, I wouldn't want to be in the way of that silver brass no, knuckle he's wearing. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> um, Dirk, man, I don't. You know, it's one of those things where who knows what would have happened. Um, my head was in the game. My head was in the game. You know what I mean? The guy's 75 years old. Um, you know, I let my emotions get the better part of me. And uh, you know, when something like that really bothers me, I don't sit there and let it. Uh, you know, I don't let just let it go by. I don't brush it off my shoulders. You know, I with little things like uh, Ali calling me a and t telling me to. You know, and doing all that, you know, I just let it roll because it doesn't matter. It didn't care. I, you know, I could care less what he had to say. But with Jerry, you know, it hit home and I didn't appreciate it. So, you know, I needed to let him know that. The one thing I knew with aligning with Memphis, though, is that even though people attacked him and things like that, I knew he wouldn't sacrifice whatever the case may be getting kicked out of the house. 
uh-huh. for an, an act of uh, trying to win the game. You know, I knew he wouldn't do anything stupid. He wouldn't blow up, and that's why I wanted to align with him. He's much like myself. He was there to win and play the game and, and not let these things get to him. I'm looking for the question. I lost the question, sorry, but it was about um, what do you guys feel about I mean, hopefully I'll find it, but it was basically, what did you guys feel about Jerry calling you guys Judas? <laughs> <laughs> you probably saw me. I was, like, rolling my eyes half the time. I don't know if people understood. If I don't know if the live feed, you should see the POV while it's happening. I'm not really sure. Can you guys? I don't know. Can, Can you, you see, see the, the POV? POV or no? so sometimes. Usually Some. the, okay, well, look, yeah. when they called him, when he made that long speech about Judas and all this, that POV meeting, Jerry talked for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, like, people long. didn't realize. Like, I mean, we were just, I was just sitting there like, this guy is out of his mind. He's just talking and talking and talking about nothing that had to do with anything. Yeah. So it was it just. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's a huge turning point for me in the game. If he doesn't call me that. You know, when he called me Judas, that gave me so much sympathy, and people realized, you know, hey, why is he giving this speech? You know, and people like, oh, poor Dan, poor Dan. That gave me a new life in the game, you know. So if Jerry doesn't call me that, you know, I've always said this. I told Memphis this. There's a lot of luck involved, and any variable could have changed in the game, and the outcome could be different, you know. But, you know, when he called me that, in all honesty, it didn't bother me because it, as, when he's calling me that, I'm like, you know, I was trying to find an angle to play that to my advantage, so. And I didn't know if, like, he thought, you know, if he meant that, but, like, if he thought he was Jesus. Or I didn't really understand. That's, yeah, that's like, I was just kind of like, part. what are you trying to say, man? Uh, from Cabo Wabo, Dan, how did you stay so focused throughout the duration of the game? Do you have any special techniques? Um, you know, it's... There's a lot of things, you know, I, I'd watched Big Brother so much in the past, I knew how important it was to me to win and, and do my best to win, I knew I couldn't do that if I was blowing up. You know, also give a little credit to, uh, I took a karate class uh, in college, and I actually talked about some Dan-like antics, I was able to work that karate class into my master's thesis, and I learned a lot of things in that karate <laughs> from a 80-year-old uh, Okinawan man, and, and how to keep your cool and things like that, but I'll tell you what, um, even in that house, I learned patience. You know, coming out, I'm a lot more patient with everything in my everyday life, and, and it's funny. You know, you never think you'd get some, some uh, personality traits or characteristics from such a crazy house, but I'm very calm, a lot more calm than when I first entered the house. It's very funny to me. That is interesting. Yeah, you really do, I think, and I, I've noticed that even with me, and Ashley has too. Like, we'll be driving around L.A., and you know that is a pain, <laughs> and I'm just very just, like, calm and collective because I really could care less about the traffic, and it's weird because I guess you deal with 12 crazy people, and you have to deal with it. You just learn to deal with it. You learn not, you know, not to let things get under your skin. I can't deal with that LA traffic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From lovely lady eighty-eight, have either one of you hung out with Keisha? <laughs> I've hung out with yeah, Keisha a few times. Yeah. yeah, me and her had brunch the other day. I mean, she doesn't live far from my house, so we. You know, we try to catch. Her. I talk to her every couple of days. I think you do too. Yeah, you know. Um, so we we try to hang out as much as possible. Yeah, I'm back in Michigan now, so obviously I can't hang out with her. But I do talk to her. You know, a couple of times a week. Uh, you know, we stay in touch. And you know, I've also talked to Rennie. And you know, there's certain people in the house that you're gonna stay in touch with because you've gone through so much with them. And and Keisha's definitely one of them. You know, she's gonna be a great friend for uh, a long time to come. Uh, from Kit Kat thirty five seven nine one, do your girlfriends get along? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they still talk. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh-huh. they talked this morning. So I think it's one of those things when me and Dan hit the road and we go do stuff. Like they're the first ones to call each other. You know, because the experience I think is weird. And Ashley tried to explain to me it's weird. You know, it's a weird experience. Not many people, you know, having boyfriends that go on a show and leave for three months and then, uh-huh. you know, are doing doing press and stuff like that. Like so, it's it's good that they get to connect. And I think you know they helped each other out a lot through the show. Yeah, definitely. You know, I talked to Monica about that. A couple nights ago, she said Ashley helped her tremendously, you know, through the whole Big Brother process because she was able to, you know, her, Ashley, and Monica were going through the same things. And, you know, it's great to know that the Renegades are as uh, good of friends as the Renegades. Uh. <laughs> the Renegades. <Yeah. laughs> okay, we're um, going to give away the subscriptions to the live feed now. Are we ready for that? Okay. Um, so the way it works is go to the message board, and as soon as these guys say go, just do a ready, set, go, okay. then uh, post first. Five people that post get a one-year subscription to Superpass. So whenever you guys are ready, All right. drop the flag. Okay. So ready, set, set. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. We're supposed to say, what's the magic word? What are we supposed to say? Magic word? What's the magic word that starts this contest? Uh, game on. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready, set. Go, go get those five go, free get uh, Just so you can watch us over again. Yes. Over. Watch me sleep. <laughs> Check it out. It's done. Oh, okay. So